So now we have Arthur. He's going to speak a little bit about massive MIMO norm assistance and how uh, intelligence reflect, reflecting surfaces could improve or not the, the system. So uh, Arthur is uh, here, my student at LUT, and he's going to present what he has been doing in, in the EIOT, he's full in EIOT, but also he's collaborating in, in Fireman. So the floor is yours, uh, Arthur, and you can start the presentation. Hello, hello. Uh, so let me share. Can you see? Yes. Okay. Is that in full screen? Yeah, it's good, but I think your microphone is like a some, sometimes a little bit far. So the but how is it now? Now it's good. Okay. Uh, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Arthur. I'm a doctoral student uh, and a researcher in the area of wireless communications here at LUT. So the goal of this presentation is to show you the, how beneficial intelligent reflecting surface can be to improve the performance of massive MIMO normal So to give you an overview of our, of the research that we have been carrying out uh, in this area at LUT. So let's begin. Um, let's go. So, uh, we, as we know, uh, the perfect generation wireless systems uh, are being widely deployed worldwide uh, nowadays. And uh, the, this new infrastructure is supposed to enable uh, diverse applications that can be uh, classified in two major classes, which, which are enhanced mobile broadband, mission critical service, and massive Internet of Things. And uh, this application, this applications requires uh, very demanding uh, uh, like requisites, like from uh, high error rates, uh, high reliability, low latency, and massive connectivity. So, to, to, for enabling these requirements, uh, the massive MIMO uh, technology is it might play a key role uh, in, uh, for enabling the requirements. And as you can see here, uh, we have uh, many comp companies already uh, building real massive MIMO antennas. Uh, you can see Nokia, Samsung, Ericsson, all uh, supplying uh, 5G hardware already. Uh, so, uh, but why is massive MIMO a key technology? Uh, for 5G. So the, the answer is uh, due to its capability of boosting the capacity of the communication systems without requiring uh, uh, additional bandwidth. More specifically, the technology uh, can it explore the space domain with a large number of antennas to multiplex the users in the space domain uh, through uh, signal processing techniques known as informal. So, uh, for example, here in this figure, if uh, the users uh, are separate and separated far enough, we can generate beams that do not interfere with each other. So, this is the key feature of massive MIMO that makes it it's so attractive for, for the 5G. However, there are situations where it can be difficult to build uh, uh, no interfering beams and separate users in the space domain. For example, if users have overlapping spatial directions, it's really challenging to, to design such beam formers. So uh, one efficient way to cope with this impairment is to combine massive MIMO with orthogonal multiplexes techniques. Uh, such as time division multiplexes, frequency division multiplexes, and so on. So uh, they, uh, these techniques uh, are really efficient to cope with the inter-user inter interference. However, uh, uh, when the number of users increases, uh, the spectral efficiency and the latency uh, can be impacted. So they are not 
ideal for, for ultra dense deployments uh, where we have a massive number of connected devices. So this motivates us to break the orthogonality and go for uh, no orthogonal multiprocess techniques, which is the case of uh, uh, power domain NOMA. So uh, power domain NOMA uh, can reduce the system latency and enable massive connectivity uh, of future generation systems. Uh, Chuet explores the power domain to multiplex different users. And uh, NOMA relies on two other techniques, uh, which is uh, superposition coding and successive interference cancellation, uh, SIC. Uh, so uh, superposition coding, uh, uh, considering the down, downlink uh, transmission, it's employed at the base station and it can be viewed as a multi-layer modulation technique where a super symbol uh, will comprise multiple sub-symbols, each one intended for a different user. And uh, conventionally, uh, different, uh, uh, less power is uh, allocated to users with good channel conditions and more power to the users with, uh, to the user with, with channel conditions. Uh, this strat, uh, by, uh, by doing, employing this approach, NOMA uh, can achieve uh, great performance gains that usually outperforms uh, orthogonal multiplex techniques in terms of spectral efficiency. So, uh, as, uh, SAC, it's a, a, a multi user detection technique that's employed at the user's device and that uh, sequentially uh, decodes the transmitted and superimposed symbols. Uh, 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 based on the, the order of the user's channel gains. So, for example, in this uh, simple two user case, in case scenario, uh, the, the user two, which is closer to the base station, has a good channel uh, condition. So, it will first decode the symbol intended to the weak user, and only after that, it will recover its own symbol. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the weak, uh, weak user, which is uh, far from the bridge station near the cell edge, will recover its symbol directly without performing SIC. And it will treat the symbol uh, intended to the strong user as interference. So, uh, for scenarios with one more than two users, a similar procedure is performed. So uh, NOMA and massive MIMO can be efficiently combined, and this allows the base station to uh, serve multiple users simultaneously, even if they are overlapping. Uh, so uh, it has been widely demonstrated in the in the literature that under many under ideal conditions, uh, mass, a massive MIMO NOMA system can remarkably outperform. Uh, the performance gains uh, achieved uh, achieve by, um, by, by these systems. Oh, it can, it can uh, sorry, can remarkably uh, improve the performance of these systems. So, uh, uh, for example, we have demonstrated in this work uh, that uh, dual polarized massive monomer systems can uh, achieve uh, great gains over conventional systems. Uh, here you have the system illustrated uh, and the proposed system illustrated in this figure. Uh, we considered a multi cluster scenario and uh, we employed NOMA to serve um, uh, subgroups of users within each uh, cluster. So uh, we compared the performance of the proposed system with conventional single polarized MIMO NOMA and, and also MIMO OMA, uh, more specifically MIMO plus time division multiple axis. And uh, in summary, in the simulations, we consider 100 transmission antennas, three users per number group, and a fixed power location with these power location coefficients. 
So I'll not explain in details the this resource, but uh, the main and uh, the the most important thing that we can extract from from, from the results is that all all normal-based schemes, which are the the orange and the blue curves, uh, remarkably outperform the uh, orthogonal multiplexes scheme uh, in the in both results here. And so, uh, uh, and uh, uh, also similar gains uh, we can be found in our other recent works, where we also uh, Propose some strategies to improve the performance of uh, massive mimonoma systems. So, with all these gains, uh, uh, was normal included in 5G? In fact, it, uh, it has been considered as a study item in the 3GPP 5G new radio. However, it ultimately uh, uh, was decided not to include uh, normal in 5G but to consider as a possible uh, candidate for future generations beyond 5G, especially in, in scenarios uh, for ultra, uh, in ultra dense use case scenarios, which is not very common in, in 5G right now. Uh, so uh, if you want to learn more about this topic, you can go to this paper, it gives you a good Contextualization. So uh, the the main reasons that uh, uh, made NOMA not to be included in 5G is that uh, in realistic scenarios, uh, MIMO-NOMA can be outperformed by MIMO schemes. It was verified that uh, in highly stochastic realistic channels, and also due to imperfect channel simulation. Uh, uh, the performance of a massive mimonomal system can be strongly impacted. And also uh, another impairment is that when the number of users served by NOMA increases, each of the users do experience more interference and this will decrease the, the, the system throughput. Also, uh, when the number of users increases, the seeking decoding, decoding process become more complex and this can lead to high battery consumption in the user's device and a high number of sick decoding errors. For example, in this work, we have investigated uh, the impact of imperfect SIC in the, in the performance of a massive mimonoma network. Uh, specifically, we, we also compared the performance of mimonoma and mimonoma and we simulated the system uh, considering nine transmitter antennas, chooses per normal group, and also articles by location or uh, power by location coefficients. And uh, as you can see here in this result, uh, the, the MIMO OMA, which is the, the orange lines, which are the orange lines, it can achieve a, a higher performance than the mimonoma when we have uh, uh, effects from imperfect sick decoding. Uh, so this tells us that uh, when imperfect sick is present, uh, mimonoma can become less spectrally efficient than mimonoma scheme. So this, uh, these are the main impairments of these systems. So what we can do? Uh, the answer is in a new con a recent concept, which is intelligent reflecting surface, uh, IRS for chart. So, and, and IRS is a promising new technology for beyond 5G systems. Uh, it consists of a planar structure uh, with a large number, containing a large number of reflecting elements. And uh, the key feature of the, in this device is that each element can be controlled by software to induce distinct phase and amplitudes of reflection in the incident, incident ele electromagnetic signals. So uh, I know that uh, one of the key advantages of the, the device is that it does not comprise components of conventional radio frequency chains like, like amplifiers and converters, 
So it has great potential to exhibit a near zero energy consumption. And this can lead to remarkable gains in terms of energy efficiency in the communication systems. Also, you can see here a, a, a common architecture for NIRS. As you can see, it has only a, a, a low power consumption devices, such as uh, pin, pin switches or tunable chips to control the electromagnetic properties of the uh, re reflecting elements. And you can see that it has, uh, we can identify three layers, which is the layer of reflecting elements, uh, the uh, layer of, uh, of the controller, which, which has capabilities of uh, communication to, to communicate with the base station. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, uh, and this is what made, makes uh, an IRS uh, uh, very promising. So uh, another thing is that uh, by controlling each element in, uh, separately, we can achieve uh, a very diverse range of functions, including reflection, absorption, focusing, polarity control, polarization, splitting, analog processing, and so on. So uh, uh, by optimizing these functions, we can achieve, uh, uh, we can, we can, enable uh, smart wireless env environments with optimized signal propagation. And this enables countless possibilities uh, uh, to be implemented uh, in the wireless communication systems of future generations. For example, we can assist uh, localization. We can, uh, uh, we can increase uh, the data rates of some users of some uh, demanding applications like uh, virtual reality. What we also can uh, uh, cancel out uh, transmissions to a possible eavesdropper and much more. So uh, uh, the possibilities are amazing, uh, very promising. So uh, because of this, uh, uh, the great potential of the IRS, uh, the IRS top became a very hot uh, research top nowadays and many researchers and also companies uh, have started building uh, prototypes as you can see here. So, okay, we can see that uh, these devices can improve in general the performance of communication systems, but how, how can it help to improve the performance of massive, uh, ma massive MIMO normal systems? What are the specific gains? Uh, that uh, IRS can deliver to my monoma systems. And uh, we have answered in this, the, in, in that question in this paper that we have recently uh, published in IEEE wireless communications. So we have identified four important gains that uh, IRS can, can provide to my monoma systems. Uh, which we named channel gains, improved the allocation, enhanced cover range, high energy and high energy efficient. Specifically, we uh, ass assisted our findings with uh, some simulation examples where we considered the downlink of a single cell network uh, with a base station equipped with eight trans transmitting antennas and the user were equipped with four for receiving antennas and the IRS with 20 reflecting elements. So uh, regarding the first game, uh, uh, we know that uh, the performance of my monoma is really dependent on the user's channel gains. This is because in order to normal to be effective, it needs to source uh, the uh, to sort the users based on this information. So uh, uh, to optimize this system to achieve an optimal performance, it can be really challenging because uh, the propagation environment cannot be controlled uh, in conventional systems. On the other hand, by deploying IRS, 
we can smartly tune the, the channel gains of each user. And uh, uh, this enables the base station to optimize the order of the users based on different criteria, like it's the rates. For example, if you have a, a, a device near the cell edge that requires a high daily rate, we can uh, uh, optimize the RS to boost its performance uh, and so it can achieve the the the, uh, the target the rate and the uh, lower user that's near the base station can be optimized to 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 provide just the 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 their rate that it requires so uh, uh the key the key mess message here is that the network can be optimized in a more efficient way. It gives you more flexibility to, to improve the performance of the network. So we have confirmed that that, uh, that gain, this gain, with uh, this simulation result. Here you know, we consider uh, one user located 200 meters from the base station, other user located 100 meters. As you can see in the in this uh, in this figure. Uh, when the user one is is uh, served without IRS, it cannot reach it cannot reach its target rate. So we optimize the IRS to change the order of the users, and now the the user one, which is the power one, can reach its their rate, and the the weak user. And the strong user which was closer to the base station and that had a uh, lower, lower data rate requirement can also uh, uh, such, uh, um, can also meet its its requirements. So this uh, is very attractive for 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 optimizing uh, the the uh, a bigger network. So uh, the second gain is related to improved fair location. So in some emerging applications, it can be important that all devices experiences uh, similar data rates. Uh, for example, industrial IoT, or uh, the, the concept of, of network is licensing, uh, can be interesting to have this capability. So uh, we and, uh, and this capability can be achieved uh, by properly uh, properly uh, optimizing the power location of the system. And uh, but the the downside of this uh, of this possibility is that the strong use, users are usually excessively penalized to increase the performance of the weak users. So the the sun rate of the system is impacted. However, uh, with the help, on the other hand, with the help of the IRS, uh, we can employ this uh, a fair allocation and still get a good performance in all the, uh, of the users. This is illustrated in the simulation example. Also consider two users, one located 200 meters and the other at 100 meters. And then you see that when we employ the spare power location uh, the, uh, without the, 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 the IRS, the strong user is very penalized. But when the help of the IRS, the, the, the user's performance really improves, improves. And uh, so and this is really, uh, really a nice finding because we can uh, provide uh, uh, an homogeneous experience uh, uh, for all the users independently of the distance uh, uh, in, the net, in the network. So the third, the third gain was uh, to extend the recovery range. So uh, in NOMA, when one of the users is facing a two degree signal reception, uh, and, uh, it can lead to a substantial decrease in the system rate. Uh, 
And uh, uh, to avoid this impairment, uh, usually such users end up being disconnected. So uh, we can exploit the capabilities of IRS to assist more users to improve the, the, the to improve the rate of the the, the fire users, so that the sun rate of the system is not really is not too much impacted. For example, this is illustrated in this other uh, simulation example where I have three users, and uh, one of them is very far from, from the base station, located at 1,500 meters. As you can see, it's their rate is really low when is not assisted by the IRS. On the other hand, when their IRS is deployed nearby, it gives a, a re, it gets a really improvement uh, of more than six times uh, than, than it was getting before. And uh, so, so now the the day rate, the sun rate of the season will continue to to be you will continue high, yes. So, uh, and the fourth and last gain was uh, regarding energy efficiency. So in conventional Maimonoma, uh, we can spend too much power to, to improve the performance of the wiki users. And in fact, uh, by doing and, and this strategy, it decreases the sun rate of this system. So it's not, uh, uh, energy efficient uh, to, to, to do this. On the other hand, with the help of IRS, uh, we can achieve the higher performance gains with less transmitted power. But uh, uh, one of observation that we made is that this is only possible if the, the energy consumed by the IRS are negligible. Uh, is negligible. Uh, for example, if it's reflecting elements, uh, it's the energy required to optimize the reflecting element can be supplied by energy harvesting uh, devices or, or, or renewable energy or, or things like this. So uh, we have uh, demonstrated in this the result, consider also two users, and we can see that we can achieve uh, remarkable energy efficient gains if energy neutrality is considered. However, if we increase the energy consumption per element to only three milliwatts, we see a, a brute uh, uh, impact on the, on the energy efficient of the system. And which becomes in, uh, inferior than the conventional MIMO norma. So, uh, uh, but uh, what else, what about other possibilities? Can we achieve other gains? For example, can we uh, uh, use IRS to help to alleviate the impact of imperfect seek as well? Uh, so the answer is yes, and we have done this through dual polarized IRS. So this is the was the current is the current research, and we have just submitted a paper in uh, trans, uh, transactions on wireless communications, which is available uh, at the archive as well. So uh, here we considered the downlink of a dual polarized uh, massive MIMO-NOMA network, and we deployed dual polarized IRS to assist the base station to multiplex users in the polarization domain. Or specifically, we, we uh, optimize the, the, the IRS to help the base station to subdivide each of the known groups into two polarization subsets. With this strategy, uh, we could reduce the interference uh, experienced by each user and this uh, uh, also lead to uh, a reduction on the impact of imperfect seek. And in addition to, to these benefits, users uh, were able to exploit polarization diversity uh, with near zero uh, interpolarization interference. Uh, so uh, to illustrate the gains, oh, to illustrate the gains that we have achieved, we 
I will show you uh, some uh, two simulation results that we have included in the paper. Uh, in the simulations, we considered a base station with nine transmission antennas for five pairs, which results for five pairs of dual polarized antennas. Users also employed multiple dual polarized antennas, but in the uh, with diverse numbers. But here, I will show only results considering four antennas. And we considered uh, four users per number group and uses one, two, three, and four were located respectively at these distances. And, uh, uh, and, and we considered that our multiple dual IRS and this IRS was having a single user. User, the users, and uh, in addition to this, uh, the users were positioned 20 meters apart from the surveying IRS. So uh, the first result that you have here, it, it's a, a asymptote result uh, considering a large number of reflecting elements. This is because we performed a, a analytical analysis, asymptotic analytical analysis considering this limiting case. And uh, uh, we see here two things that uh, and the, the and the performance of all the users, it improves with the increase of the cross polarization transmissions level, which usually can be detrimental to the performance of the polarized systems. And another thing is that we have huge improvements in, uh, uh, over the, the conventional single polarized MIMO number. So this is a really nice finding, we could improve the, the performance of these systems uh, by and the, the the complex of the seeking decoding was decreased and also uh, all the users experienced less inter interference. Uh, this was possible by like moving the complexity of the system to the optimization of the IRS and not to the user's device, which is a, a good thing. Which is a good thing. So uh, the second, the second last uh, result is uh, uh, it shows uh, the performance of the system in the presence of imperfect seek, imperfect uh, SIC. So as you can see, when uh, the convention of single polarized uh, uh, is experiencing uh, imperfect SIC, it has a performance uh, uh, worse was then they achieved in the single polarized MIMO woman. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the, the, the system assisted by the dual polarized IRS can achieve uh, a great performance improvements, uh, such that when you have uh, already nine uh, reflecting elements, you can outperform the all the systems for the majority of the SNR considered as SNR range. So these are, uh, we, uh, we think these are very uh, nice and promising results. Uh, and uh, uh, it was uh, a, a very good work that we had developed uh, together. So, uh, so what are the perspectives for the future? Uh, we uh, intend to investigate the impact of the hardware impairments in the proposed design because we did not, uh, we considered uh, uh, infinite uh, phase shifts and infinite uh, uh, control of amplitude, infinite resolution. So we will try to see what are the impacts of using discrete, uh, discrete uh, phase shifts and amplitude control. Uh, we will also we will investigate coupling between the amplitude and phase of recollection, which is an important factor. And also we will try to optimize user group and see, and, and see the optimization of our location as well and exploit the signal polarization in the uplink since in this work, we have considered only the downlink. We also intend to study the application of IRS to, rate and to, to a new uh, uh, promising multiple access technology, which is rate splitting multiple access. 
and uh, it seems that it has great potential to be implemented in future future communication systems as well. So this ends my presentation. Uh, this is my email, and thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Very good presentation, and uh, really enjoy. Really, I think everybody could understand what you are doing, and it, it, it's it's very nice. So you have one question. So can you can you see the question? Just a moment. Um, um, where is it? It's in the Q and A. It's like a, a for determining phase shift at each IRS channels should should be estimated. How did you do that? And another question: How did you group the users? Uh, Wait just a minute. I'm trying to come back to the to the questions. Uh, I'm still sharing the 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 screen. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm not, how can I stop? <laughs> uh, so so uh, can you repeat again? The, oh yeah yeah. Now I I can see. Thanks for. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Yes, uh, channels. Okay, how did you do that? And uh, let's get how did you? Okay, so uh, uh, we we considered uh, that uh, the base station has the knowledge of the the channel gains. We do not take the channel estimation into consideration, uh, but this is a, a nice possibility for future works. And about user grouping, we also did not optimize user grouping. We used uh, like a uh, fixed uh, a scenario uh, where we set the location of the users. But this is another possibility that we intend to extend uh, our works. Yes. So one, another question. Use, was it an open loop? Uh, it it was uh, to build the the to build the the precoders. It was uh, 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 it needs uh, uh, the knowledge of only the the channel covariance matrices. So it's an, uh, it's partial CSI. It's not full, uh, uh, but it's partial. But it, it imposes a uh, much less uh, like a um, uh, less, uh, it's much less demanding than using the full CSI of the system. But of course, we need the full CSI to optimize the IRS. Yes, yes, is the in common and love approach. Yeah, you're right. And and th there is one more question from the anonymous, so you can you can try to answer this quickly, and then you can finish. So. If you use a different structure. Yeah, this is a, a interesting question. I don't know how to answer right now, but it's a, an interesting idea. We can take a look at, at it later. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Arthur. And and I can I can tell about this. I think like a, the idea is to I think like I are still too much in the physical layer, and uh, one thing that could go towards this direction is to look at the uplink. But yes, uh, yes. and then you can think about how this uh, more physical layer technique could be starting going towards ultra reliability and things that are looking a little bit more in the uh, 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 in actual deployment of 5G or massive and so on. So we're basically abstracting all of this and see just what's the performance gains that this can provide. But okay, so thank you very much. Uh, Arthur